hello welcome back to my channel i am Lori cooch this is another makers with heart mystery envelope challenge this month's mystery envelope came from our friend julie um let's read her rules um i thought it would be fun to bring back a challenge we did a while ago this month let's see who can get the highest score i'm gonna guarantee you i'm not getting the highest score because i'm lousy at taking uh, score of what I'm doing. My family just got back from Disneyland, so I had to add a Disney element right there. I've also included some Let's Party paper. Use the following point system to see who can earn the most points for their project. Add one point for each paper collection you use. Add one point for each stamp set you use. Add three points for each technique you use and add five points for using the Let's Party papers included in this envelope, and add 10 points if you include the Mickey in your project. It can be a hidden Mickey. Have fun, Julie. Okay, so the funny thing about this is, I had to make a birthday card for um, my downline and friend, and it just so happens that in 2000, and I think it was 15, Close to My Heart convention was in Disneyland, and we went and she convinced me that I needed to go into the park because I had never been to Disneyland before. And so my first time to Disneyland was with her and we had a blast. And then the next year we went to Disney World. And so it's perfect that her birthday card is going to have a hidden Mickey in it because she loves Disneyland. And like I said, she took me for my first time. And then let's party because it's going to be perfect for birthday now I am staying true to our videos earlier in the month that was stash busting so if you haven't watched those go watch those but I pulled out some old confetti wishes paper and I've pre-cut things for the sake of time and I've also pulled out my Party Gnomes uh, stamp and thin cut set and pre-cut and colored some gnomes. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I've seen a lot of things online lately about rocker cards. And they're not new, but they are new to me. So I thought, let's do that. So I pre-cut some White Daisy cardstock and then some of the Confetti Wishes paper and um, we're gonna create a rocker card with that. So I will put the measurements for these circles um, in the description below, but um, I think it's gonna be fun. So let's get started, and I will be using parts of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold this circle in half. That's going to create the rocker element of our card. And now it's funny because these have been around for a really long time and things just kind of circle back. I've, I've never seen this and I have been scrapbooking since 1999. And so I'd never seen this before, but you know, things come around and we learn new things, but you may have already seen these. So there's our rocker. So the next thing we're going to take the next circle down we're going to fold it in half as well. I'm going to um, score it. And then I'm going to just take my trimmer and I'm gonna cut right down that score line. And I know there's other ways of doing things and everyone does this different. But this is what I'm doing. I'm going to do the thing, same thing with the rest of my circles. And the reason I am doing that is so it does not get so bulky on the fold that it makes it hard to fold the card. doesn't have to be exact. I need to grab my other trimmer. This one, the blade needs to be sharpened. 
But it's way down there on the floor. Oh, no, it's right here. And on this one, this was double-sided. I'm going to use this side. Not that it matters in the folding and the cutting, but just throwing that out there, that that's what I'm going to use. Ooh, maybe this one is bad too. I might need to replace some blades. Find out. Yeah, I need to replace some cutting blades. They'll be fine for right now. And then lastly, the small one. I tried to do as much of the, the work um, ahead of time so that I didn't waste your time. But some of it is just gonna be here. Holy cow. Okay, I'm gonna just hand cut this because I need to replace those blades. Otherwise it was just going to tear it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is take our pieces and stack them up in the order we're going to use them. Um, I'm going to ink the edges of this and there's so many colors, I don't think it really matters what color we use. Um, but her favorite color is purple. So I am going to find a sponge. This one will work. And I am going, this is a used one, but it will work fine to use some old ink gypsy. And I'm going to ink around the edges of this on the front and the back. So I guess this is considered a te technique. I'm not really keeping score. And I'm going to do the inside as well. So I'm just going right around the edges. I love these little mini blenders. They are one of my favorite items in my tools. Okay. Not gonna do the top. Eh, why not? Let's do the top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, so remember how I cut this one in half? I'm going to add it to the front of my card. Now, once I do this, you're gonna see the downside of using um, paper that is has an orientation to it like this one is when I put it on the back it's going to be upside down but that's okay because there's going to be other stuff covering it that I'm not going to worry about it too much the assembly of this card is so quick and easy 
So now we come to our next white uh, half circles. And because I did Gypsy before, I am going to use another older color, Topiary, to ink this one. <clears throat> And I'm going to do it to both pieces that are going on the front and the back. Don't need to do both sides because um, it's going to go flat down. This is going to be a very, very busy card. And I chose topiary because there's so many greens and that's why. Now I'm going to put this down on my card front. Just kind of eyeballing where it goes. And I'm going to put this one on the back. Then we have our next pattern paper. Since I'm on the back, I'm just gonna stay there and put this one down. And I've seen it, like, I see how I held it down here. I've seen it where um, they put it right up, but I wanted it kind of, more around. And then we have our last, our last bit of white. And I am going to, I'm using my mini blender. I have sandpaper on here and I'm just gonna rough up these edges. I want it to be really distressed. So I'm just going around and distressing this one. So it's kinda goes with my cut that got a little mangled up, but just another visual little element. And I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it here. It's not very bold, it's actually very subtle. And if I was using colored cardstock, this would show more because we have white core cardstock. But I just want a little rough edge. Okay. And I'm going to. I'm going to ink that with the gypsy again. I, don't, I mean, you guys really got to understand how much she really loves purple. So I get, I mean, I can, I can see that it's distressed on the edges. I'm not sure that you can see the roughness on the video, but it's there. It's very subtle. You you could even skip it if you wanted, but um, sometimes it's the little things that add just that little unknown touch that people subliminally, I guess is the word I'm looking for, pick up. Okay. So now I'm going to put that down. And now the fun, we get to start 
decorating. And I guess it really doesn't matter which side is front or back, except for I do want the upside down words on the back. Okay. So now, taking my stamp set, there's some sentiments on here. We have, it's your day, like no mother, let's party, happy birthday. So I am going to take the happy birthday and I'm just going to random stamp it all over this. And since I used Gypsy before, I'm going to use Gypsy again. I'm going to use um, a, if I can find my post-it notes, well, we'll just use some scrap cardstock. Um, second generation stamping. So I'm going to put this Come on. around here so that it doesn't get <laughs> a little overkill, but it'll work. So I'm going to just kind of do this and then stamp it off and put it here and stamp it off. And then we're gonna do the same on the back. I should have probably stamped those before I put them on, but I always forget. So I'm just taking my cardstock that I cut this out of and making a mask for it so that it doesn't get on my paper. And this one, since it's the back, I'm gonna do the whole thing in second generation stamping. zip strips and I was going to put them across here but I've changed my mind I'm going to put it inside just right along here and I'm going to then trim off it's easier for me to trim it after it's on there versus trying to measure it and trim it because it's on a curve. So I just gotta make sure I'm below that score line. Then I'm just gonna take my scissors and Room. And then next we have our gnomes. And had I been thinking, I wasn't thinking. You guys know I don't do that a lot. I was. I should have um, copied what the other makers with hearts do, and that is double they they stamp the or cut these out in multiple times so that they um are thicker but i didn't i didn't think about that 
but we're gonna just make do. Um, where, oh, where is my foam tape? Holy cow, you guys, I've lost my foam tape. There's some. Ooh. Okay. So I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of these to pop them up a little bit. And I don't want to go too high up because my, my gnome is going to hang over the top. And the envelope I'm going to make, my, my card needs to be less than seven inches high. So we're going to have no problem making sure of that. So I'm going to put this guy here. And this one here. And she actually kind of goes with the curve of, and I might, I need another piece of foam tape in there. And I'm not going to use the gift. I, I punched out and, you know, maybe I am. Never mind. Um, we have these other two guys, these other gnomes. Gonna throw him up there too. Told you this is gonna be a very, very, very busy card. But that's okay. It's actually really fun to, to do this. Oh, have I lost my hidden Mickey? I have not. Okay. So hidden Mickey is going to go inside right up here. And along with this little Nomi girl. And then I can write in here for, for her. And then to use this... Because I said I would, I'm going to fussy cut out. Um, what do we have here? I'm going to fussy cut out this hat. <laughs> you guys hear my dog? He's growling at me because I'm ignoring him. Just a minute, baby. Mm. And this little heart. It is a balloon, but I'm not doing it as a balloon. I'm going to just cut out the heart. Hush. And then off of this one, I want the balloon. And the your day. I hate fussy cutting. So just throwing that out there. 
I know people who love it. They find it relaxing. No, not me. <laughs> Can you hear him? He's so funny. He's not neglected, I promise. I'll come back in and get those little spots here in a second. It's easier for me to do this this way. Hush, baby. Okay. So back to the inside. Oop, don't want to break them off. I'm going to put the your day. Put it right here, actually. And these little party hats. And balloon and heart and this little package. So put those all down here in the corner, kind of hide the balloon like it's coming out from behind. Okay, so this is the card. And I just love it. I think they are so fun to make. Now, you can turn off this video and that's it. Or you can stay tuned for a little bit longer. I'm going to show you how to make an envelope to fit this. Okay. Now, for the envelope, you're going to use your punch board. And um, honestly, I've had this for a while. My sister gave it to me and I always forget I have it. But we're going to use it today. So to make this card fit in this envelope, you need a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So this is again out of the confetti wishes. And you need to line up, I wonder if I have a better ruler than what I have here. The edge of your paper, you want it four and three quarters. Mm -hmm. And you want the three quarters to be under the, the one on this punch board right here. It doesn't have to be exact, but, um, you know, eyeball it. I think we're good. And then you're going to punch. And there is the stylus for this. Okay, forget it, we'll use this one. There's a, um, I'm not letting this move. There's a score line under here. So when you come in here, you'll find that score line and you're just gonna score it down all the way. It's, it's not gonna go all the way, but that's okay. Then you're gonna twist the paper all the way around and you're going to do the same thing. Put the four and three quarters under the one. Punch it. And score it. Again, it's not gonna go all the way. Now for this, you're going to line this score line up with this little uh, flag right here on the and you are going to punch and score it again same with this side line this little they call it a score guide up with your score line Punch it and score. So now I'm done with the scoreboard. I'm going to grab a 
So now you're just going to fold in the two corners. You don't have to score them super, super good, but you want them to, to stay folded. I'm going to put um, some of this red line tape in there to keep it um, down. It's a little stronger than normal adhesive, but you don't want to, you make sure you don't get it in here because then it's it's going to, gonna just screw up your your card because it's gonna it's gonna seal your envelope shut so I'm gonna put some at this tip and here making sure it's not going to affect the inside of the envelope and then try and get it off And then I'm going to fold this one up and I'm just going to run some more of this along this edge here. Now this is going, when I put this down, it's going to um, seal our envelope, which is what we want. But if I want to mail this, you would want to put it up here as well. I'm not mailing it. I'm going to just hand it to her. So I'm going to put this, a little dab of this up here to hold it shut but I'm not going to take the backing off of it until I am ready to put, to actually seal it up. Like I still have to write my sentiment and stuff in here for her. So I'm going to take those off. So now see when I, when I do that, it's going to seal it down for her. And here is the card itself. So it will just slip right in here. Kind of have to do it in an angle because of the things popping up. And then, voila, there is my envelope for her. It's a little bit big for this card, but like I said earlier, you could make your, your pieces that go up here all the way up to seven inches, and that would make it fit. But um, that's it. That's how you. That's how you do this. So thanks for watching. Be sure and check out the other um, makers with hearts. See what they did with their mystery envelope. And ooh, I have to add. So pencil, pen. So I get ten because I use the Mickey. I get five because I use the Let's Party. And I did um, an inking technique and a distressing so that is six i used a stamp set and an additional paper collection so 15 21 22 23 i believe is my point score um i'm not sure but i think that that's it so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i know this one was a little bit long be sure and check out the other makers with heart see what they did with their mystery envelopes and if you like i said if you had not watch the stash busting videos they're they're right there on my timeline and it's um called uh stash busting and each of us have one of those as well so i hope you come back soon and have a great day